So, first of all, welcome everybody. I am not a YouTuber, and I barely ever make any kind of original videos on my channel. I basically just use it as a dumping ground for speedrunning stuff on Twitch, but I actually felt like making one today. So as I put this all together, it's November 2nd, and I wanted to put into the universe what the Super Mario RPG Master means to me. And I'll bore you, like I'm not gonna do like some kind of reaction video where I scream, I'm like, oh my god! Like, no, nah, none of that stuff. But I want to bring you back to 1996, because I think that little slice of time is actually really important. Because that was during the heyday of Spice Girls, like the Backstreet Boys, Mission Impossible, Gangster's Paradise, the N64 came out, and in between all of this shit, there was Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo. I think the timeline of this, for me, as a kid, was actually super important, because this almost ceremoniously marked the last time that I would play a game that the internet wasn't there. Um, like, we didn't get the internet for a couple of years after that, or I wouldn't say, like, reliable internet, because, like, we had it at school and stuff like that. But it still really wasn't there yet, and the internet wasn't there to, like, readily spoil everything. It wasn't there to direct me. It wasn't there to help me. It wasn't there to guide me. Like, there was no game FAQs or, like, anything else like that back then. And you're probably thinking, like, oh, Grandpa Dave, what did gaming look like during pre-internet eras? And honestly, I think that's what was so fun to me, because it was actually all kinds of weird stuff, like paper maps, friends, like, conversation between people. But specifically, the thing that I think I remember the most about it was the playground rumors. Like, they were the forefronts of everything. So these are my two files. Uh, this one, the top one, is actually from when I learned to speedrun this game. I, I like this game so much I've never really speedrun any RPG before, but I really tried to learn it. And I have a shitty time, it's really bad, it's like four hours long. But I did do it and I've always wanted to go back to it, but that's a whole different other story. And this save file was actually particularly from the onset of 2020 when everybody was trapped inside during the beginning of the pandemic. I decided, you know what, <laughs> feeling super lonely, like, okay, we'll, we'll go through this game again, and I enjoyed it. And I can show you very simply, uh, before I kind of explain that next point, you know, we did everything. We have the super suit, we have the tax scarf, we have the quartz charm, like, we, inside this game, 100%. And when we were growing up as a kid, the playground was such a weird thing, because imagine being a kid. Imagine you come to school, and you're just sitting in the playground one day, and one of your friends runs up to you, and you literally says, you know what? I walked off into the sky, and I jumped, and I talked to somebody, and I found fertilizer. And you're like, no you didn't, like you're full of shit. Turns out you can walk off into the sky, and you find fertilizer, and from there, like your kid brain just blows up. Like, where does the fertilizer go? Who do you give it to you? Do you like put it in Yoshi's Island? Do you put it in a bookshelf? Like, is there an NPC that wants fertilizer? Like, nobody mentioned fertilizer, nobody found fertilizer. Like, does this guy need it? Like, who? And that's like the sense of wonder that I think I miss so much from being a kid. On a small side note, I remember memories, obviously, from this game when I was a kid. I had a friend named Danny, and his dad rented this game specifically for himself back then. He thought it looked really cool, the graphics or something else. He got to this part where he talks to this NPC, and it says, Hey Mario, look what you're standing in. He waited for three hours. He just waited, thinking that the text box would go away. All you have to do if you've never seen this before is jump. You push B, and it's like, oh ha ha ha. He didn't know that, so he waited for three hours, and then he took the game back to Blockbuster and returned it, because he thought it was broken. This was the first game, well, the first Mario game ever, if not ever, but to me especially, that gave personality to the characters in the Mushroom Kingdom. You know, like Mario and his friends, they talk to each other, they had problems, they worked with each other. Bowser even cries. Like, as a kid, I cannot tell you how funny it was to see Bowser cry. You know, King of the Koopas, lightning in a bottle, earthquake in a can. Just an emotional mess that set a booster's tower. Like, it, stuff like that was really fun. So when I saw the remaster, I was honestly shocked. There's a reason Gino for Smash has been a meme for like 20 years. And that's because this game has a really complicated history with licenses that should have prevented a remaster from being remade. Overall though, I can admit the art style looks okay, and I'm more inclined to say that I prefer the pixel style of old, but at this point that's like old man yells at cloud, so take it for what you want. I think though, it really evoked like a feeling from within me, 
and the best way that I can kind of describe that feeling is wonder. I was curious if they would change anything, and despite changing Valentina's drink, <laughs> uh, and Malo's ability psychopath, they seemed to keep this actually pretty faithful, because the more I saw from the trailers how much they were trying to adhere to the original, the more that sense of wonder kind of really grew inside me again. And I can say that this might honestly be the first time since being an adult I'm buying a game specifically on day one. I'm looking forward to it, and I have this feeling just sitting there inside of me. I think there's two thoughts that kind of are applicable here, and that's that video games can be a powerful medium, and our world can be and is a really bad place, full of really bad things sometimes. So I know going through as an adult, it's going to be obviously a little bit different, but when I was originally going through this game in 1996, my grandfather actually passed away in 1994, so all the themes around Mallow and his grandfather kind of hit me kind of hard back then. Going through this game in 2023, I'll be reminded that my dad passed away in 2022. So I already feel the underlying themes and the importance of family and grandfathers are going to be a little bit stronger than I think they originally were. But still, there's that little spark inside that really continues to look forward to this being released. And I think that's largely because of that sense of wonder that's still there. Like I genuinely look forward to experiencing and exploring what I experienced as a kid, but now as an adult. In a world where it's really easy to be angry and hateful all the time over everything, there's very few things like this. And I know this is subjective, because for me it's this game, but to everyone else it might be a certain song or a certain movie. But I really hope new people experience even a fraction of what I feel for this game as the release draw is near. It's a reminder to me, anyway, of simpler times as a kid, when life really wasn't that complex, and when video games are surrounded by a sense of mystery and wonder, it really takes me back, because I can't even say any of that is true anymore as an adult. So I really hope a new generation finds the same love that I found in this game with the remaster, or maybe it encourages people to go back and check out how well the original aged. Maybe in another 25 years I'll get to experience a remaster of the remaster, and then my brain will really explode. But yeah, that's about it, and why I look forward to this game coming out. It made me feel good as a kid, and hopefully it makes me feel good as an adult. And I look forward to that.